Thank you very much, President. And it's a great pleasure to be here back at the Oxford Union. Four years ago, we were here and won this uh, debate, and I hope that we'll win this debate tonight as well. It made me think of some of the great political figures from the past that have attended uh, this society and ended up as president. I'm thinking, of course, particularly of Michael Foote and of Tony Benn, two people in whom the flame of injustice burnt brightly, the flame against injustice, the flame of hope to build a better world. Two heroes of mine. I want to congratulate as well Jenny on a fantastic speech, a fantastic, inspiring, compelling speech. As I listened to Jenny, I thought, I'm not going to hear a speech tonight that is as persuasive a condemnation of the government as that until I heard Conrad's uh, speech. <laughs> Even Wikipedia couldn't save him. <laughs> but we are living in the sixth biggest economy in the world. And I think virtually everybody in this room will know the state of affairs in which we live is wrong and can't have confidence in this government to sort it out. A recent report showed that there were 300,000 excess deaths linked to Tory austerity uh, between uh, 2010 and uh, the 12 years after 2010. And now, whatever they say, the Conservatives are planning another grim round of austerity. We've got a government which is incredibly unpopular and with reason. 11% of people think that Liz Truss is doing well. 71% of people think Liz Truss is doing badly. 18% think that the Truss government is the best on the economy. And 14% think that Liz Truss makes the best Prime Minister. We have the shocking situation where 80,000 people put this Prime Minister and her dangerous ideas into Downing Street. There is no democratic mandate for this extreme experimentation in trickle-down neoliberal economic theory. And they've shown already that trickle-down economic theory is one of the biggest lies in politics. It was a lie in the 70s when it was introduced in Chile. It was a lie in the 80s under Thatcher and under Reagan. And it's a lie now because wealth doesn't trickle down. Wealth is hoovered up by the very richest at the top. We've got a situation where this government is acting like Robin Hood in reverse, taking from the poorest and giving to the richest. Look what they did when they tried to get away with scrapping that 45p tax rate. That was the practice of handing over £55,000 to each and every single person in this country that is paid more than a million pounds a year during a cost of living crisis, during a situation where there are more food banks in this country than there are um, uh, branches of McDonald's, in a country where people are having to choose between heating or eating, in a country where pensioners are riding buses in order to avoid having to turn on the heating at home. And it is the sixth biggest economy in the world, the sixth richest country in the world. This is a result of an immoral political choice. This is a result of a government and a prime minister that doesn't care about the people who live in my constituency, doesn't care about the people who live in Oxford. This is a government that made one of its first items of business when it came to power in this cost of living crisis to lift the cap on bankers' bonuses. And they celebrated that. I think that's immoral. I think that's sick. How can we have confidence in these people to do what's best for the majority of people in our society? And Conrad said earlier, and he was right on this at least, that this cabinet is the living embodiment of their values. And I agree. We've heard what the Home Secretary, Suella Braverman, said about her dream of seeing the newspaper headline of migrants being sent to dangerous Rwanda. 
We've seen what they've done about letting the rich off the hook. We've seen what they've done where they're totally denying the impending climate catastrophe. You know, lifting the ban on fracking. This government is a living embodiment of the rotten philosophy of Thatcherism, the rotten philosophy of there is no such thing as society, only individuals and their families. And it's not just people on the left that can't have confidence in this government. It's anybody who believes in British civil liberties. They've been attacking British freedoms, hard-won freedoms in our society. There are three main ways of fighting back against unjust policies in our society. The first is through the ballot box. The second is through the peaceful protest. And the third is by taking industrial action or strike action. And because this government wants to pursue the economics and politics in the interest of the super privileged 1%, then they're trying to take away these freedoms, these ways of fighting back. They've introduced voter ID. Make no mistake, some people say that this is a sledgehammer to crack a nut because voter fraud is a very rare thing in this country. It certainly is very, very rare indeed. But this isn't about a sledgehammer to crack a nut. The Tories know what they're doing. This is straight from the right-wing Republican playbook in the United States. It's a voter suppression strategy aimed in particular at working class voters and in particular black and ethnic minority working class voters. And then you look at the way they've criminalized peaceful protest and you look the promising or threatening even more draconian anti-trade union laws. This is a deeply authoritarian government governing on behalf of the 1%. But it's been a golden era for the super rich. The system is working. British billionaires have increased their wealth by £220 million every day. We've seen ga gas and oil companies making £2,000 per second, per second in profit. And then we must mention the way they mishandled COVID. I will never forgive this government for its role in the unnecessary deaths of tens of thousands of people during the COVID crisis. And why? Because they didn't want to shut things down, because they believe in the free market dream. They didn't want any interference in the market at all, and that's why they delayed doing the right thing. But during COVID, some of their corporate friends got very rich indeed. When this government, in that awful crisis in which so many lives were lost, so many people suffered, what did they do? They use their position in government to transfer billions and billions of pounds to failing companies to enact COVID contracts. And that bell that's just rung, if we have any decency, should be the bell that tolls the end of this Tory government. The bell that tolls the end of Liz Truss. Liz Truss is a continuation, an intensification of what's gone before. She can't be separated from the 12 years of cruel Tory failure, but she's ratcheting it up. She's pushing this free market fantasy, this Chicago School of Economics policy, and more and more people are going to suffer as a result. And I must mention our National Health Service. In my opinion, the greatest example in our country's history of socialist principles put into practice. That there are some things in life and in the economy and in society more important than the pursuit of profits. Only the other day, this week in Parliament, I was sat there as a Conservative MP, celebrated the fact of the increased reliance on private health care, and he said that this was, and I quote, a policy opportunity. And he said, and I quote, that the post-beverage revolution is here and the government should embrace it. That Conservative backbencher spoke for Liz Truss. That Conservative backbencher spoke for the free market fundamentalists who are in senior positions in this government. The Conservative Party never believed in the NHS. That's why they voted against its creation time and time again. So I don't think anybody can have confidence in this government. So many Conservative MPs don't have, even have confidence in it themselves. And 
people around the country, whether they voted Conservative, Labour, Lib Dem, Green or didn't vote at all, they know that something's wrong. People don't want to be the guinea pigs in Liz Truss and Kwasi Kwarteng's free market fundamentalist laboratory of economics. Not at any time, but still less during a cost of living crisis. And Iron Bevan, one of the great heroes in our country's history, one of the great heroes in the history of the Labour Party, coal miner, trade unionist, socialist, founder of our National Health Service, who oversaw as well the building of so many council houses and helped to create that new society after the Second World War, once said, talking about the working class majority in this country, we have been the sufferers. We have been the dreamers. Now we are the builders. I think everybody in this room surely knows that whatever your political views, if we're to have any chance of building a better society, the society that our children and grandchildren deserve to live in, if, we've got to have any, if we're going to have any chance of building that better society, we need to boot this rotten conservative government out. So I urge you all to vote for decency, vote for fairness, vote for those who have been kicked at the bottom of our society over the last 12 years and now. Vote for a society that's better, fairer, more equal, and more decent, free of scapegoating. Vote for a better way forward and vote for this motion tonight and let's kick this government out.